the question has been asked, where in the world did this apricot mango come from? I was down at the Delray Beach Historical Society dealing with, I'm not sure what, what I was there for or discussing, but they knew I was, had something to do with the mangoes and Lawrence Zill was my dad and he worked with the mangoes and I think they were trying to put on some program that showed some of the things that originated and worked in Del Rey and dad's name is certainly prominent when sure. it came to uh, the, the mango work. And uh, a lady there, her first name was Dorothy. Uh, she mentioned that the best mango she ever ate or that she knew about. I'm not trying to quote her exactly, but the, the grew all along uh, second, what we what becomes uh, Seacrest mm -hmm. as you go north, uh, near 12th Street there in Del Rey. And she said, we, the flavor of it is so unique from other mangoes that I, I like it very much. And we've taken seeds from those fruit to Bahamas and tried to grow them over there. And they never grow out to be the same. I said, well, of course, they, they're, you know, they need to be grafted if you want the same thing. But that was beyond the discussion there and uh, time was up. So. Anyway, I determined I'm going to stop by and see that tree that she's talking about. If it's on the corner, she said it's a big tree. And when I got there and looked, yeah, it is a big, big tree. It's mm -hmm. one of the, probably one of the biggest mango trees in Del Rey. Wow. And it's still there. And uh, there were, in season, some years it doesn't fruit. Other years it has a sporadic amount. Uh, but at that particular time, there were a lot of fruit on the ground. And I found one that had enough of an edible part to it that was still there that I could get a sample. And I, yeah, that reminds me somewhat of the Pahari mango. Mm -hmm. Now, you probably know the Pahari. Uh, or Bombay, <laughs> it's got a flavor somewhat like that. Mm -hmm. It's not identical. And there the fruit were much larger than this. I think the larger the tree is, the easier it is for them to grow larger size fruit because there's more, more nutrients bigger. available to feed it. I, I brought wood here and got a number of plants started of it so I could get fruit of my own. And uh, you're gonna get to take this. We got more coming so you can know what it's like. But it's not a big fruit, and I'm not recommending it as a tree to put in your yard because it just may make a big tree for the amount of fruit you would ever get out of it. But it is a delicious mango, and I think it's worth preserving, for, at least in some places. And uh, when we sampled it here, I'm not sure if it was myself or, or if it was Verna who said it reminded her of the taste of apricot. So we just started calling it apricot mango. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it de deserves a, a name that doesn't prejudice a person against its flavor. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. There's a lot of, lot of uh, varieties that seem to um, give you a uh, you know, like a, a clue as far as what they think you should taste in it, right? <laughs> a lot of, you know, like when you taste a lemon meringue, you are expecting to taste lemon in that fruit and such. And so it sort of gives the, the surprise um, away or whatever. Today we have a new variety of mango and we actually do not have it in our grove yet. Uh, Walter Zill, who lives just down the street from us, uh, gave us three apricot mangoes and they're a very small mango but we would like to to taste these uh, before tasting it though i thought I'd, I'd just thank walter for saving this particular variety of mango there's only one tree uh, the original tree as far as we know that is in delray beach and it's probably uh, two miles from where walter is and he went over there a couple years ago because he had heard about a mango that people said was just great. 
and he was actually able to find some uh, graft wood on the tree. Now since that point in time the tree has been trimmed and so you can't get graft wood unless you have a huge ladder. Uh, but he got the graft wood so that uh, he grafted it on some trees that he had so he has this variety um, backed up from the original tree. So um, we have a few varieties, um, a few variations of apricot. Uh, these were you know like really good examples of the coloration that they can get and this one is not. Um, this one was a drop and I'm guessing it was uh, in the interior of the tree. It doesn't have any blush at all. Uh, but we thought we would try these and see what we think. I'm going to just because this is what I do all the time. I cut into bruised fruit to see what it looks like inside. So we'll see if it looks like it's good on this side of the fruit. Oh. Somehow it didn't quite make the cut there. Okay. I think it looks okay, but you can be the guinea pig. <laughs> I would prefer a non-bruised piece. <laughs> You're looking forward to a non-bruised piece. <laughs> I do not taste off flavors in this. It might have lost some of the flavors, but I also might have given you the worst peas <laughs> I've gotten in it. So sweet of you. A better one myself, but it's... Um, it definitely has an apricot taste. It's very rich. Yeah, I'm not a fan of apricots, but I like that mango, this mango, a lot. We'll try for another mango. Let's see which one of these is riper. I think the smaller one is. It seems like. Let's see. Oops, bruised. Let's see if the other side is bruised. The other side is not bruised. That beautiful orange flush. It's like a uh, apricot flavor on steroids. It's very good. Very smooth, rich flavor. Very refreshing. And it's much smaller. I mean, this is a large apricot from what I can tell. Uh, the fruit are not big about the size of um, a turpentine mango, uh, but... But fib I, fiberless. But no fiber, yes, yeah. completely without fiber. You gotta be careful compar fiber. comparing it to Just, a turpentine. It's only the size of it, but uh, it's... Um, it, it, it's just like really um, satisfying and sometimes I don't want to commit to a big mango. <laughs> and so, you know, having a fruit this size is makes a really nice snack. It's very good. I can't really think of an another mango that has this flavor profile. It seems unique. Yep, it does. It's, um, and as I said, there's just no fiber. The flesh that's near the skin is pretty tasty too. I, I'm not yeah, a lot of mangoes you hit the the flesh near the skin and it's very bitter or resinous and you you wouldn't want to <laughs> eat it. Like Har would probably eat the skin. Well, he, I believe Har eats the skin on every variety at least one time. But then he remembers the ones that really don't taste good, and he won't won't <laughs> repeat on those. But yeah, um, I think that's a, a very unique variety, and definitely one. Yep. That's that's one that I, I am going to graft in the grove, and so that we have a supply. But 
Uh, it's going to be a few years before we actually get fruit on whatever I graft. Uh, so, I'm, you know, I'll top work a, a small tree and, you know, cross my fingers.